Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and in this episode, hopefully, we will get the Rockster out on its first drive. I hope. All right, guys, welcome back. And those of you who are watching previously will have seen that uh, I got the Rockster's V8 engine running. And uh, last week I managed to button up a bunch of the bits and pieces and basically connect up almost everything. And in that process, I discovered that I had missed uh, the power steering. Uh, if you missed that episode, I'll put a link up above and uh, please think about subscribing and uh, hitting the bell and that sort of stuff. It does help us out. Back on the power steering, basically I stupidly uh, assumed that the power steering reservoir was in the front of the car and the power steering pump was in the back and uh, they weren't actually connected. So I just basically connected the existing, the Audi power steering pump to the uh, inlet and return sides of the, the fluid, but there's no uh, actual reservoir. So there's nowhere for fluid. I am going to rectify that though. I ordered a, uh, a Raceworks power steering reservoir. So I, today I have to mount this. Um, I just had a quick look and uh, I'll take you through it now, but I don't think it's gonna be too difficult. It should be a relatively straightforward process to uh, get this in and get the car, hopefully, buttoned up, ready to drive. All right, so um, as you can see here, this is, the, uh, this is the original power steering pump. And the way I set it up is I connected it up this is the pressure line, uh, that clinks up fine. But what I did with the return line is I actually looped the two together. So I don't know if you can see, if I can get an angle where you can actually see up here, I've actually joined them together. So what I need to do is uh, disconnect where I've joined them. The bottom side is gonna go into my new tank and the top side is gonna be the return back into the pump. So uh, now it's time to get a mounting for the pump, find a mounting place and then see if we can plumb it all together. All right, I have to make things complicated for myself, but um, because I don't want to pull the engine out and try and make brackets to weld onto the body of the car, I'm going to mount this off of the uh, the side of the engine on the mounts that did mount the um, plastic valve cover sort of uh, trim pieces that were there before. Uh, so I've made up this sort of complicated uh, piece of CAD design uh, with a hole through the middle where the dipstick still can be accessed through. This will give me a nice mounting spot for the uh, power steering pump. Not the simplest, but uh, this is the way it needs to be. So I'm going to uh, open this up now and go and cut it out, fold it up, and hopefully get it so I can solidly mount a power steering reservoir. All right, well, that was a bunch of CAD, but I actually have my whole uh, template here. Uh, it's all welded up. It's uh, sort of nice and reinforced. There's a couple of captive nuts on the back to uh, mount my thing in. It's the paint's still wet, so I'm sort of trying to not hold it too, uh, too tightly. So I'm going to bolt it all up now and uh, see if we can mount the uh, power steering tank in place, and then we can start looking at what we're going to do about fitting some hoses up and connecting the whole thing into the circuit.
You can see it mounted in there now. Uh, it's quite a tight fit, but uh, that is going to do the job nicely. I can still get to my dipstick and uh, yeah, it will, uh, it clears the air filter. Everything is sort of out of the way. It's not going to be the easiest thing to fill, but it's not impossible. I can just put a tube in there. It's not, it's not a, uh, um, it's not insanely difficult. So uh, let's get it up now and see if we can get some hoses connected. All right, so I have my power steering all plumbed up. The uh, the hose is not the straightest. There is a bit of sort of kinks and it's quite difficult to fit everything in. And I've put a bunch of cable ties, keeping everything sort of away. I've got issues where there's lots of things that are really close to the exhaust all over the place that I need to uh, sort out. Even uh, I've noticed here that uh, my gear selector cables are actually, it's actually touching the exhaust here. So there's a bunch of things that I am going to have to, I'm going to have to get in there and move that. I need to get myself still a bit more length on those gear cables and uh, yeah, I think uh, my ugly exhausts are going to be uh, looked at. This is a very temporary exhaust system, obviously. Uh, yeah, there's more, there's more to look at. All right, I think I am ready to uh, at least start the car and see what happens. Um, I haven't started since uh, a couple of weeks ago. I am nervous about starting it again now I have a belt on it um, there were a couple of uh, issues last time when I started when I sent the log to Adam in New Zealand at link and uh, the issues were that the lambda sensors weren't working properly because there was an inconsistent power uh, coming and the alternator wasn't working and I started looking at the wiring and stuff with the alternator and then clicked that I'd never actually connected the belt when I started it before. I deliberately didn't put the belt on, so that's why the alternator wasn't working, it wasn't turning, uh, which also may be the reason why the Lambda sensors weren't working properly, because they weren't getting uh, a good 12 volt signal. Uh, so I'm gonna get the uh, laptop out again, get ready to take another log, connect up the battery and uh, turn this thing over and hopefully we have power steering, we have a coolant system that works, there's lots of things that can go wrong here. Uh, I'm just crossing my fingers. Power steering pump's not sounding good. I think it may still be low on fluid. I'm gonna check my fluid levels and uh, try again. So I did mention that I'm not a mechanic uh, in the previous episode, and that's not how you bleed your power steering pump. So the uh, I just looked it up, and the way to bleed the power steering is to top it up, and then without starting the car, turn the steering wheel left and right, left and right, left and right with the lid off, and let the bubbles come out and let the, everything go through the system. That's the way to sort of help get it all bleeding. Do that for about five minutes, left and right, left and right, and then um, and then make sure the level's right start the car left and right with the wheels on the ground just to, under tension, get to see if it actually is working and then uh, top it off again and it should be good. So uh, the other thing I did notice is uh, I have a leak and that is not a good thing. Okay, I just had a look under the car and I've got a leak there and that is power steering fluid and it's dripping from my connection. So gotta get the car up in the air and uh, fix that dripping connection. All right, there are a couple of hiccups there, a couple of leaks that I've gotten on top of now, I think, I think. So hopefully now I've uh, dry bled the power steering. Let's see if it still makes horrible noises when I start the car up again and uh, see where we're at. I don't hear the pump, but I just got a 
hideous belt squeal, but I think that may be because it's got fluids on it from uh, what was leaking before. So I think that's probably why the belt is uh, squealing. So let's see if we can sort out a belt squeal and then uh, try again. All right, so I've done a couple of fixes now, another couple of uh, tests, so let's try and start it again, see if the belt is still slipping, see if the power steering is still making horrible noises, and uh, see how uh, the lambda sensors are going. I've got a couple of fixes in for them, so uh, let's take another log and see what happens. That sounds better. Looks like we've actually got lambda sensors that are working. That's a win. And it sounds good. Um, at the moment, that actually all seems like it is working the way it is supposed to, and we're getting a slipping belt when I blip the throttle. It seems like it's got really, really snappy throttle response. Uh, that may be the uh, the calibration of the uh, fly-by-wire throttle, but uh, yeah, it's 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 really, really snappy. So um, overall, it's sounding pretty good. I'll have a look at the logs, and uh, then we may be ready to take it for a quick little spin. Yeah. All right, well, I think everything is mechanically ready to take it for a quick little test drive. But uh, before we do that, I need to actually reconnect up the roof because I can't leave the roof sort of half open like this. And uh, I need to put a, uh, a boot back on it again. So let's bolt up those bits and pieces and uh, yeah, see if we can actually just see if it'll actually move under its own steam. DRS re-enabled. All right. Moment of truth. First drive. Let's see if it actually does anything, if it moves. Fingers crossed. Nervous. An engine behind you and the brake pedal definitely needs some work but it drives it is actually a running running car which is amazing <laughs> oh yeah that brake pedal is bad there's something seriously wrong it was wrong before but the pedal's getting stuck down yeah that's not good she's warm 
All right. Whew. It works. It drives. There are definitely a few things I need to work on. The accelerator pedal is too high. Um, I thought I'd place it nicely, but uh, I'm, it's definitely not. It's definitely way too far, uh, too high up. Um, the brakes is something I definitely need to work on. Uh, I've got to cover the engine, and it's far too loud. It is too loud. Um, the tracks, even though it is a race car, the race tracks that I actually drive on, particularly Wakefield Park, which is uh, my local racetrack, has a noise limit, and I am certain that this will blow that. So um, I would get kicked off straight away. So I'm going to have to do something about how loud it is. But it works. It drives. It runs. It's not perfect, but um, we can work on that. <laughs> Success. The Rockster actually moves under its own power. Uh, it has much more power than it did before, particularly just the torque down low is, uh, oh, that's a huge change. It's... Um, as I mentioned, it is far too loud. There is no way I'm going to get away with uh, the local racetracks with the, how loud it is, so I'm going to have to do something about that. Um, it's quite smelly because there's uh, an engine right under the back that's not covered at the moment, so I've got to do something about covering that. The accelerator pedal is too high uh, off the ground. The brakes, there's something wrong with the brake pedal, but that, I think, is an existing issue that was... Uh, Thing before it's got nothing to do with the engine conversion it's more to do with the brakes itself so uh, that's something else I gotta have a look into but it works it works it runs it is a running driving car now that uh, actually does what it's supposed to do so that's a huge win it's taken up a spot in the garage on the hoist or whatever for the last six months or more I'm not sure exactly how long I've been working on this now, but it's been a while, and now it actually works and runs as a car again. It moves, and I can uh, do things with it, which is fantastic. So um, if you've been enjoying this series, uh, thank you very much for uh, joining along. If you want to help out, join us on Patreon, and uh, you get to watch the videos a day early, ad-free. And if you need parts for any of your Porsches, make sure you compare prices at PorschePartsByJeff.com first. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Oh, it's smoky. But it's all... <laughs>